Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to paint some winter foliage. So let's do it! Okay, so to start I'm just going to go through my materials. Today I'm using Arches watercolor paper um, that I've already placed out what I'm going to paint on it. I have my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors. I have my Princeton snap brushes in a size 2 and a size 6 and my water and my paper towel and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're doing winter foliage today, which you can just paint alone on a card, just like a little sprig of pine or something like that. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do them. Or at the end, I'm gonna show you how to put some of them together in this circle here to create a wreath. So all of these are fairly simple and we're gonna jump right in. So I'm gonna take some sap green here. Um, the first one we're gonna do is cedar. So. Cedar actually has some brown for that stem there where it's connected to the tree. And I'm just going to create the middle line there. And then I'm gonna take my, my sap green and I'm just gonna create some lines and twigs like kind of coming off of it. Go one there, and we'll do one this way. Okay, and then off of those separate twigs, you are going to do some more lines like this. Just use light pressure in the tip of your brush, okay? Okay, so now on each one of these um, individual lines, you are gonna create these little, tiny, smaller lines. So we're just going to use the shape of the tip of our brush and really you're just making lines. It's actually fairly easy. This is a great full filler for a wreath or a bouquet. You can definitely change up the color of it too. Maybe you can add a bit of darkness to some parts, maybe closer to the stem, whatever works for you. Okay, you're just gonna do it on every single one of those little lines. Obviously going away from that center line. So you're almost creating a V shape. So going out, 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 and then out in the opposite direction. Okay. Okay, and that's honestly about it. <laughs> Very simple cedar, okay? So the next one we're gonna do is blue spruce. Now we're gonna create a new color for this. Um, we want more of like a dusty bluish green color. So I am going to take some Viridian here, which is this bright bluish green, and a bit of dioxazine purple and I'm gonna lighten it. Okay, so we have that color there. But first we're gonna start with some brown for the center. Okay. And we're just gonna create the stem for the center. Like so. And then I'm gonna take that color and I'm just gonna do small 
pine needles coming off of that center. Using very light pressure and a flick of your wrist. And if you need to turn your paper to do it the other way, you can definitely do that too. Okay. And I'm just touching the stem, even though that there's brown there, the brown is dragging out just a bit and that's okay. I kind of like when it bleeds into each other. I might create a bit more of a darker one. Just to create a bit of contrast in some of the pines, but it's very simple. And I love this color. It's almost like a grayish blue green, mixing that dioxazine purple and viridian together. Okay. And that's honestly Bruce, blue spruce. You can do another twig going that way and do a few sprigs of the pine, which would be great. And now the next one is just pine. Okay. So these needles are a lot longer. So again, we're going to start by creating that, that stem with the brown. I may actually go a bit darker with this one. It's a bit thicker of a stem. And I'm just creating little dots to make it look like it's kind of got some texture to it. Okay, and then I am going to take some of my Hooker's Green Dark and maybe a bit of that purple, the dioxazine purple. And these needles are gonna go out longer like this, okay? And they're just gonna go out. You want them to be as straight as possible. I have a bit of a shaky hand here, so it's a little bit harder. And I have to keep dipping my brush into my paint and my water. Because I'm using such a small brush, because I want that really fine line, it runs out of paint. It doesn't hold as much paint and water like a big brush would hold. So just this one, you gotta, you have to kind of be a bit patient which is one of the things that I'm not really, <laughs> okay? But it's as simple as that. And there is your pine, okay? Super easy. Okay, the next foliage we are going to do are berries. So I'm gonna take my burnt umber color and I'm just going to create some stems. Just little, little twigs coming off of these stems. And you can create small berries or big berries. I'm gonna use my Cadmium Red Deep. And I'm just gonna do some circles. You can always leave a little white spot for like a highlight if you want, you don't have to. I can hear my son throwing a tantrum upstairs with his dad. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that. Gotta love the toddler stage. And I might just create a couple more off of those. There's not even any twigs really connecting them. And if you'd like to go a step further and add a bit more shading to it, you can add a bit of dioxazine purple to your red and then just hit the bottoms of them with that darker color. Like that. Berries, very simple. Um, one other thing I might do is I might take some of that brown and just go over some of those stems again and have the stems bleed into the bottom of the berries just slightly. So you don't want to overwhelm your brush with water because then it will kind of take over that whole berry, but I like it to bleed in just a little bit. So just don't add too much water or paint to your brush. Then you get a nice slight bleed. Okay. 
The next one is a pine cone. I have done this before, but I will show you again. So I'm using my bigger brush for this, my size six. My burnt umber, and I'm a light wash of burnt umber. And I'm going to put my brush upside down. If this is difficult, you can flip around your paper. And I'm just gonna create an upside down teardrop shape. Okay. One at the top, one there, one there, one in the middle. And then I'm just gonna kind of use my brush with those shapes to kind of go around. And it does not have to be perfectly teardrop shaped or anything. So don't, oh, there's hair on my brush. Like that. And it's a fairly light wash. You just get bigger as you go to the bottom, okay? Leaving white space in between all those little spots. Okay. Okay, and now I'm gonna take more paint and a darker color. I mixed a bit of black and I'm just gonna hit the bottom of those little things that I made just to create a bit of a shadow. Like that. And that just adds a bit of dimension to it. And that's it, simple, simple, simple. Okay, now we're gonna get a little bit more, not difficult, just bigger here. Um, we're gonna do a magnolia leaf, which are so beautiful. I love the color. Um, we're gonna start off by just doing a brown stem here. Okay, so one long stem in the middle, like that. And then some small ones coming up the side from that stem like that. like that okay now I'm going to create a nice deep kind of bluish green again so I'm going to take that viridian color like that and then my dioxazine purple maybe a bit of hooker's green dark I want it a bit more on the green side just keep mixing until you kind of find a shade that you like. I might add a little bit of black too, just to darken it up. Okay. And I'm going to just create simple leaf shapes by using the light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, and coming back up. That's one side of the leaf, do the same thing. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And I like to leave a little bit of white space in the middle sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, that's okay. Now I'm gonna wash off a bit of that, just dipping it in my, my water. I just go like that, run it against the side. And then I'm gonna do another one over here, but it's gonna be a lighter wash of that color. Just to vary up the, the contrast, like the, the values of it. And then I might hit the bottom, the base right there with some darkness, okay? Um, I'm going to create another one of those dark leaves over here. Okay, that light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And then I just go back over top of it just to kind of move that color around so it doesn't dry in one spot. I might do another one over here. And they can touch each other if you want. I added more green to this one to change it up. Um, I've noticed some of the leaves are brown too, so I'm just going to add another. I'm going to take my burnt umber, add a brown leaf in there. Okay. Go back in. And I might go over the stems again just to have that color bleed into the leaves. Okay. And I think I might add another one here, and then there'll be one up here. So this time I'm going to take my sap green and I'm going to create that light leaf up here. And I might do another one over here. And I just touched a bit of the brown leaf just to have it bleed into it a little bit. And it should bleed evenly if it's the same amount of wetness and if not I'm just going over it like that so they bleed nicely into each other I'm 
So if you're having difficulty with that, you can always refer to my um, water control video. Just like that. Um, that, and then one up here. Okay, and it doesn't have to look like this. You can just do a couple leaves. Just darkening this one up. Like that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do some mistletoe. And I did um, a version of mistletoe on one of my um, card tutorials. And everyone in the comments liked to jump on me because mistletoe berries are white. And you're right, they are white. I added red berries for a bit of contrast just to have fun with it, but people weren't impressed. So <laughs> um, I will do some white berries for you, okay? Um, I'm gonna use this really, really light, light wash of blue over here to create the berries because anything white on white paper, you're gonna wanna have a bit of an undertone to it. So I'm gonna create the berries first, okay? And I'm just going to make them blue. Ooh, really, really light wash of blue, almost barely there. You can even take Payne's gray if you want and make them a bit more on the gray side. And sometimes you need to go lighter than you think you're going, okay? You'll feel like, oh, this is too light, but go even lighter than that. And it will show up, especially when it dries, okay? And I'm just gonna create those berries. Like that. Just gonna add a bit of shadow to the bottom of some of them while it's still wet. Like that. Okay. So there's my berries, and now I am going to do the stem of the mistletoe. So it's gonna be hanging down. And I'm just gently gonna touch some of those berries. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to flip my page upside down so I can do the leaves off of those stems. Make sure you can see it. Okay, I'm just gonna mix all the greens I have in here and just see if I can get a nice green. Okay. I'm going to do a lighter wash, and I'm just going to go just try not to <laughs> put my hand in the magnolia leaf. Okay, and I'm just going to go off of those and create the leaf shapes of the mistletoe. Varying up the value, so lighter and darker ones. Even the color you can vary. You can do light green, dark green. And I'm sure someone would like to tell me what color the leaves actually are. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're light green, but maybe some of them have a shadow on them. So I'm going to do some dark greens. Point is, I'm not doing photorealism here. I am painting simple watercolor foliage for fun. And it doesn't really matter what color you do. Okay? Because it's your painting. some lighter ones. I like that. Let's see what that looks like. Awesome. Okay. And that's mistletoe. Um, I feel like the berries are still a little bit light for my liking. They're hard to see. So I might just add a bit of darkness to the underside of some of them with the Payne's Gray. Wash off my brush and then just blend it out a bit. Because white berries are hard to see. Okay. Like 
wash it off again, blend it out. And there you go. There is your mistletoe. And then last but not least, I did this on one of my card tutorials. I did some holly, but I'm just gonna show you again if you, in case you missed it. So I'm gonna start off with the red berries. It's very easy. One, two, three berries. Filling it in with a lighter wash. Then I'm gonna go back in with my deep red and just pick one side to hit on those berries. Even add some of that purple mixture, like the dioxazine purple mixture to get some of that shadow at the bottom to make them a bit darker and richer, like a nice shadow. Like that. Okay. Then we are going to do the leaf part. Okay. My foolproof um, holly leaves, ready? A line. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Then you're gonna connect those lines by doing a little scoop, 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 scoop. Fill it in. Like that. I leave a little bit of white space around that line in the middle. I like to drop in some more green. So I have some sap green here. Then I will take some hooker's green dark. And just go around some of those edges just to darken up the edges and maybe right by the middle. Like that. Done. Okay. Let's do one more leaf. Try not to touch your berries, it will bleed otherwise, but I mean, if you do, mine's bleeding a little bit, don't worry. You can always mop it up with your paper towel if you make a mistake and it's still wet. It's always an option. that my darker green around the edges like that and that's your holly super super easy okay so quickly before we finish i'm just going to use some of these um foliage pieces to create a little wreath around here. I'm not gonna use all of them because it would be crazy, but I will show you how to use some of them. Um, I like to start with the bigger leaves first. So I'm gonna create some magnolia leaves. I really like those deep, dark colors. So I'm gonna start by going, I did um, a circle really lightly with a pencil and create a stem going around that circle and then just create little stems off of it. One leaf, two leaves, just wash some of that off so I can get, and I might change up the color, green, okay? And I'm gonna keep doing that around, changing up the value, changing up the tone of the leaf. So you know what, I might actually do a couple guides so I can do the same color all at once instead of having to wash my brush off over and over again. Okay, so I'll do all the dark ones first. If that makes sense. Like this, get some of that darker green. Okay. I'm going to get some a sap green color.
Okay, so there we have our magnolia leaves. Um, actually, I might add, you know, maybe some brown ones, smaller brown ones. Just because I like that color combo. Okay. Um, you could do the pine cone. You know, pick a spot and just do a small pine cone, just making those dots. Oops. It's a little harder to see sometimes. On a smaller wreath. Like that. Now I'm going to do some of the blue spruce pine. So that's the smaller one. Make a sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. I usually do these twigs coming out off of that circle. So one, two, you can just have them. off like that um, and if you're wondering where to put them just put them wherever there's a white space you feel like it, you could add a bit more you know lush to it there's no like right way to put it like you just do what you think looks best there's the great thing with these is that you just kind of keep filling it up you can't go wrong with like creating little lines, right? Okay. So now I'm gonna take the sap green and I'm gonna do longer pine. Let's just So these ones are just the longer needles. Have them going on the outer and inner bits. And then, mm, might add a bit more here. Wherever you think it could use some. Then I am going to create some stems uh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to go right in with some berries. Okay, so make sure it's dry wherever you're putting your berries, just so it doesn't bleed into whatever you just did. Even though I probably will do that now anyway. And just create some little red dots. You can do the stems if you want, but because this um, wreath is so small, I, I'm just not going to even bother. I'm just going to create some little red dots. You could always do bigger ones too if you wanted to make nice big red berries. Wherever you think, you could use that little pop of red. And it's super Christmassy, wintry, beautiful. And you could definitely do that on the front of a card, write something in the middle, and that is about it. There is your winter foliage tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.